It's another game that I got for free for the purposes of doing a review, this time coming from publisher Thunderful. All I knew about Wavetail going into it was a pre-release trailer, and I thought the whole gliding across the water stuff seemed pretty neat, and the art style looks nice. And hey, in the game, that much is true. That's about the whole game though, and it doesn't last very long. This is a real short, bite-sized adventure that can be cute and fun at times, but it's not deep enough to warrant much merit, and it's not nearly long enough to have much value. I won't give it a full recommendation, but if it looks and sounds interesting to you, as long as you know what you're getting into, then I suppose it's not so bad. The story follows a sort of post-apocalyptic country that sunk into the ocean, and all that's left are islands with small communities. It's kind of like The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, but not nearly as large. You play as Sigrid, a young, curious girl living with her strict grandmother. The two live their days trying to make ends meet when an evil, cloudy force known as the Gloom crashes across all the islands. Sigrid is temporarily stranded until she meets a shadowy figure that grants her the ability to walk and glide across water. With her newfound power, she must now push back against the gloom and rescue her neighbors along the way. The story deepens down the line and goes into themes like learning from the past to build upon the future. There's also a little bit of political commentary and a lot of environmentalism. It can get preachy, especially towards the end, but it's not too bad, at least as far as short, straightforward, story-based games go. Wavetail isn't too special. There are plenty of artsy-fartsy indie games that have told better and more interesting stories, but it's fine for what it is. Presentation-wise, Wavetail is a little all over the place. The camera direction and framing for the cutscenes isn't spectacular, but it is fairly good for an indie game. I recognize the use of proper camera cuts and editing, even if it is a little janky. The graphics and art direction are great. I really love the look that this game is going for. Reminding me of Wind Waker again, the facial animations are cartoony and expressive. It's pretty impressive how well the game's 2D art style translated to a 3D world. This can be seen in the building architecture and most of the character designs too. A lot of it is warped and exaggerated to help emphasize that cartoony approach. This is very subjective, of course, and it won't appeal to everyone, but I think it all looks pretty cool. The sound design, however, has some issues. Most of the time there's music playing and it's nice to listen to. Nothing outstanding, but, you know, serviceable. The weird part is the lack of sound effects. Things like attacking enemies or diving into the water have no sound cues. It's very strange. It might be a glitch or something because it'll play sound effects sometimes, but it's rare and the game is usually just silent, other than background music playing over the action, and that's it. I actually don't hate this too much, but it is weird and I'm sure it's not intentional. The voice acting is also worth mentioning. The two main actresses actually do a decent job throughout, although everyone else isn't all that great. Still, not bad, and I'd say the voice acting is well implemented for the most part. The gameplay has an open world style of progression. You reach a new area, talk to the people there, do side quests, proceed with the main story, and so on. It reminds me a bit like Gravity Rush in the sense of style, progression, and general attitude, although Gravity Rush did it a hell of a lot better. Even so, the sense of speed you get when you surf across the ocean is really cool, and the racing challenges do a good job at showcasing how to use momentum to your advantage. That said, you can only surf around for so long before it starts to get boring. There's usually dialogue to help keep your attention, or these weird pipes to launch yourself through, for fun, I guess. But when you get down to it, this isn't that much different from riding your horse through some grasslands like so many other open world games do. Wavetail does it a little better, sure, 
but it is what it is. It's not gonna change your mind on open world games, that's for sure. Combat is definitely the game's biggest weakness. There's so little to it that I question why it was implemented at all. Your only two attacks worth anything are to spam the light attack button over and over, or jump and press the heavy attack button for a ground pound shockwave. Other than that, you just mindlessly wail on enemies. There are a couple of different types of monsters, but it hardly means much. Even for the giant water striders, it's still very basic and automatic. You press a button to grapple to them, mash away, and rinse and repeat. The final boss, or really the only boss, does have a bit more going for it, but it's still hardly anything. Not to mention how easy it all is. Your health automatically regenerates so quickly that you'd have a hard time getting a game over. So what's the point? If Wavetail focused more so on platforming, then I feel like it could have been better overall. But this mediocre combat isn't doing the game any favors. It's not like the platforming is amazing either. A lot of it can be just as automatic as the combat with these slides and grapple points, but I feel like they might have been onto something here. It just never gets fleshed out enough by the game's end, which is its other biggest problem. The whole thing is about four hours long. Five hours at most. It's a surprisingly short game because when you initially start playing and you see the world map, you think that you have a big adventure ahead of you. Once you uncover it all at the end, you can see how little of the map actually gets used. Furthermore, most of the action takes place at the ends of these paths, and there's not much to do on the way to your next objective. It's fairly common for open world games to be spread out and empty, and Wavetail can be particularly bad about that. One thing I can respect Wavetail for is that it doesn't waste your time. The gameplay and the story move at a good pace, and, aside from some traveling, there's very little in the way of pointless filler. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean much when what you do is itself mediocre. The combat is the big sore point, but the platforming is lacking a fair bit as well. Wavetail is elevated by its overall nice presentation, but the killing blow is the really short length. You finish it all in a handful of hours the same day that you download it, and there's no replay value either. All this makes the game rather below average, but I do see what they were going for, and I respect the attempt. I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you like how it looks and you can get it for cheap, then I suppose that it's not so bad. Thanks for watching my review on Wavetail.